Hello everyone, welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today we are going to do an SST, oh yep, this is going to be five, just over 500 tons actually we're going to be trying to carry into low Kerbin orbit with this SSTO. Uh, there it goes, we're going to actually have to get rocket mode going straight off the bat, because uh, this thing is just, a, it's massive, if you <laughs> if you couldn't tell. So uh, we're, we're going to have to use rocket mode for takeoff on the uh, rapier engine, so that's a bit inefficient, but that's uh, that's just what's happening. So uh, let's go ahead and take off now, and then I'll go ahead and give you guys a rundown of the video. Go switching back to jet engine mode for our ascent and speed up maneuver. So basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this these three sections of orange fuel tanks you can see in the craft. All there's two mounted on the side pods over there, and then there's going to be one mounted on the top. And uh, we're just going to try and carry those all the way up to orbit, dock them together, and we're going to have a nice snazzy, it's about 540, 50 tons, the whole thing together, so it's it's a bit chunky. So what we're doing right now is we're just trying to accelerate the craft to 450 meters a second, because that's the 440s where the rapiers get into uh, the most efficient, most high thrust mode, or not mode, but uh, it's where they're most efficient and they have the most thrust. So we need to get up to that speed at a low altitude, and then we can start accelerating and climbing up a ways. So we're just going to be flat here. This thing does not have a great thrust to weight ratio. It actually does have a pretty good one, but its drag is just really bad. So we have to kind of stay here. Just crossing 400 now, so we should be able to get up to that speed fairly quickly. And then we can start climbing away. Uh, sorry, guys. I do want to uh, say at the beginning of this video that uh, do apologize. This video got delayed a day. And it's coming out a little bit later. Uh, this thing was, as you could probably imagine, not very easy to make. So we're going to have to, uh, unfortunately, delay it a little bit. But that's uh, that's fine. Hopefully you guys think it was worth it. Because uh, I'm pretty happy with this craft. It's one of my one of my favorite SSTOs that I've ever built. Uh, this thing, basically, the way it works, it's just uh, three, uh, three lines of Mark III fuel tanks. Uh, they're all rocket rocket fuel, so liquid fuel plus oxidizer, and then we have a bunch of pods with the uh, engines on them. We have like 30 rapier, 40 rapier engines, something around there. And then those all have the liquid fuel in them. So you want about, I think it was 9 to 11 fuel to oxidizer ratio on these things. So that's what we were, we tried to go for. You have a little bit extra oxidizer, but uh, I mean, it can be optimized a little bit further. Uh, just, yeah. A major challenge of this craft, um, if, if you're not uh, built cargo big SSTOs. Basically the challenge with them is both is two. So getting from getting doing the climb out and getting into orbit is generally not not the limiting factor. The limiting factor is usually either accelerating from 300 to 450 meter or 440 meters a second on your initial um, uh, ascent back there and then or it's uh, being able to pitch up and having your center of a uh, mass far enough back relative to your center of lift, especially when we have the payloads which are mounted so close to the front. So that was a major challenge for this SSTO. And there's also, the wing was probably one of the biggest challenges because, you know, on the one hand you want a big wing so it can actually take off at a low speed and it doesn't like just crash. And uh, all, you can have less engines so you can take off quicker. Or also, but you also want a small wing because wings are useless in space and you're just wasting efficiency and also they create drag because, you know, they're pretty big. So it's a, it's a challenge to build these SSTOs. Like, it's a real challenge. Um, we're just accelerating now and that payload on the top is also a pain because it's just a huge piece of drag which is not fun to deal with. But, I mean, it took some time. We got I got this SSTO working. Uh, that's just the basic design of it. Uh, please don't try and build this thing. Like I know it's in time warp. It, we're not time. You're watching this back in a time lapse. This thing barely runs on my computer. Uh, I get like seven FPS. You can see in the top left corner, I have the Nvidia thing pulled up, and I have a uh, you know, I have a 7700K, which isn't you know the newest CPU, but it's not the oldest either, and it's not the worst. So. That's something to keep in mind. Don't try and build giant craft like this. It's a disaster. I hate it. This video was an absolute pain to record, but I think it came out pretty well at the end, so it was worth it. Maybe. All right, now we've uh, just crossed 20 kilometers, and the rapiers no longer have enough thrust to or air to be able to produce enough thrust to keep us accelerating. Uh, so we're going to have to switch into rocket mode, which just 
means it's in closed cycle mode, it's starting to drain uh, oxidizer from the tank rather than get it from the air, and now we're just gonna be climbing up pitching as deeply as possible and trying to get our APWAPs up. Uh, one thing, I don't know if you just saw those explosions back there, uh, this is something I could have worked on. Uh, there, there are two engines that do explode. Uh, I don't know why, I think they're kind of clipped into the biggest tail fin and they kind of overheat and explode. So that is a bit of an issue, so uh, I probably could fix that, but I, you know, I was recording this video really late at night, so I kind of said, eh, we'll go with it. You guys can live. Okay, so we're going to go for about a 90 kilometer by 90 kilometer orbit. So I, w I don't want to do just 70, because I mean, you know, I want this to be a practical SST. Like, this is not the biggest SST anyone's ever made, but I, I want to say it's one of the most practical, because I mean, yes, Bradley Wiston's made his 1,000 ton SSTO, but that is with a bunch of like ore tanks, right? That are, I mean, the payload's tiny and he gets it to like a 70 kilometer orbit. I mean, he did what he was trying to do, like the goal was to, uh, he has an SSD, actually, I, I'll get back to that. I wanted to just talk about that fairing deployment for a second. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but when I deployed that fairing, it kind of just disappeared. So that fairing is obviously dead weight once you get out of the atmosphere. So, and also because weight deploys, it would just crash into my craft. So what I did is I hit deploy and then hit time warp right away so I could time warp it like magically through. That's a bit of a trick if you're looking for, that's actually a very like niche use, but, or a very, not many people would need to do that. <laughs> Cause not many people are in the, you know, kind of have to do what I'm doing. But anyway, what, what I was saying about his best of skill, like he did what his goal was, like he accomplished, I need to get, his, his mission statement, right, was I need to get big SSTO with a thousand kiloton, or a thousand tons and then maximizing the fuel to, or the mass to payload ratio. Mine isn't that. Mine is, let's make a practical SSTO that can carry 500 tons to low LKO. And uh, I think I accomplished that. And uh, one thing we do have to do is kind of reconfigure the craft when we deploy the payload. We have to move those uh, things back up, those side pods. Those are extremely hard because those are literally pressed right up against the thing and they they have a tendency to kind of bounce off and ricochet and not dock. It was a pain to get done. And I also didn't put any um, electricity batteries on those side pods, so I have literally 30 seconds to get them docked or else I run out of electric charge. It was a pain. I hated it, but it, it, we ended up getting it work. Uh, I did, yeah, the reconfigure idea is something that came from Bradley Wiston's. Um, he is very good at building. Um, I'm sure, if you don't know what his channel is, I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of you do, but if you don't, have a look. It's great. Uh, yeah, he inspired. I think that's the best way to make SSTOs or big payload SSTOs is to have to do reconfiguring. It's uh, it's the best best way in my opinion. It's great. You can shield the payloads from the airstream except for those top one uh, that didn't. But um, yeah, you can shield it and you don't you don't have to like put it in the back and like you lose engines that way and all that kind of stuff. It's uh, it's the best way I think in my opinion. And then we can just go ahead and reconfigure the SSTO, and then it can get ready to do its landing. And we have way more than enough fuel to do our landing. And then we can go ahead and uh, dock the fuel tanks together. And basically, what, every time I docked, it kind of moved the SSTO up a little bit. So I have to kind of stop it so we don't crash into the fuel tanks. Don't know why it does that, bit of a glitch. But now we're just going to go ahead and do the docking for the fuel tanks. So the fuel tanks, each of them weighs, each of them have two of the two of the, um, whatchamacallums, the uh, orange fuel tank. So they all weigh, and they're fully fueled too. They So each of them, you know, they, they weigh a lot, <laughs> basically. Um, so they're, they don't, they're not very maneuverable with the RCS thrusters, which is a bit of a faff, but it gets, it get, we work it out. They're, it's kind of, they're sluggish to dock, but you know, at least they both have good reaction wheel system or reaction control system. So they, uh, they, they're able to dock themselves together using the simple lawn lazy method of docking. I have those fairings, so it kind of looks like the thing you don't get to see those docking ports kind of jet out. So it kind of looks like they're one big thing. I think that was pretty neat. And then we can go in and turn this one around and then we do the final dock and then we'll have a giant fuel tank to refuel literally anything with. Like, it's hard to get a scale of how massive like that SSTO is. Like, it's massive. Like I have, uh, remember, if you guys uh, watched my Munrover video where I made a, guess what, Munrover. 
and it was pretty big too. And that the Mount Rover, I put it next to this SSTO, it is puny. It is absolutely puny relative to the SSTO. This thing is absolutely huge and something I would not recommend any of you build because it barely ran on my computer and I have a pretty good computer. And it had all sorts of problems as well. Like when we get to the landing, you'll see some issues I also had. Takeoff is an issue. It's very easy to rip it apart if you get it a little too over controlly. You know, it can actually burn up in the, on ascent if you're not careful. You can run out of fuel if you're not careful. All sorts of things if you're not careful. It is a mess, but it works. And I also really love the look of this. I'm very, 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 very happy with this uh, with this SSTO. Like, very happy. I am. I am amazed how quickly I built this thing, considering, considering how ambitious it is. Um, but I did have some help. But it was it was all along a good day, and I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. And we can just go ahead and deorbit the thing and land. One kind of major issue with the SSTO is that it uh, doesn't, it can't land on empty fuel. Um, it has it's, it's too back heavy to land on empty fuel, so we have to have always leave a little bit of fuel in. So we so its max payload is a little bit limited by that, and uh, we're gonna have to pump all the fuel into the front so it doesn't get back heavy, and then we're gonna have to go ahead and do the re-entry. It also has a tendency to kind of be unstable if you kind of do weird re-entry, so I just kind of go straight prograde and then work it out from there. Accurate landings of the thing is very, 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 very hard. So we're just we we end up just landing in the middle of the desert, not the yeah yeah the middle just the desert. Not the desert airfield, but I originally was going to go for the KSP, but it just it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> uh, you guys are more than welcome to try. So we're just coming in now, the doing some flippy flippy maneuvers. I'm going to just deploy the landing gear because I'm like, yeah, we're not going to we're not going to the KSC, so we're just going to go ahead and try and just land on that uh, piece of desert just up ahead. Now we're doing some spin moves. You might see some explosions. I think you, they already happened. Those are just some of the RCS thrusters falling off. Uh, I'm like, I, I'm. Actually, I don't even know if they did explode in this attempt, but you see, we're kind of spinning out right now, so I'm going to have to try and figure out, you, this thing has re-entry issues, but that's kind of just what happens when you have, like, just massive craft like this. Go ahead and spin it down, and then eventually we were able to kind of throttle up the liquid fuel engine, or the, yeah, yeah, the jet engines and pitch it up. And then here's where things get very interesting, because this thing, the, the terrain that I wound up at is very, very, very slopey, and this thing can really only land on super flat, like the KSC, basically. So I do, after, I spent like literally an hour trying to land it, and I just, I gave up and cheated. But, yeah, we cheated. I'm a cheat, I'm a hacker, I'm a hacker! And then look, look at that, that's in one time speed, you can see how horribly that thing runs on my computer. And then there we go. We we did, but uh, I do go ahead here in just a second, and I, 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 I cheat my thing back into the sky, and then I just fly. I move it over to the KSC, and then I can just. I'll demonstrate that it theoretically is landable without cheats. That I'm not. I'm not a a, a, a liar. I don't have to cheat to make my things work. They, they don't work without cheats. Even with or with cheats, they're just so bad. <laughs> so. Here it is. It is very. If you get it in a controlled state, like what I, I when I was landing, it was like up and down and left and right. But if you get it like controlled, like I have it right here, it is just, it is just, just nice. Like look at that. It's look at that. I was very happy with it. Um, so it, so the bottom line is, if you can get it to land on a flat surface, it lands just amazingly. If that if you don't, it's just gonna crash. And uh, one last thing I do want to say before the end of the video is I would love some names for this thing. Um, we I went through a lot of names in my head. None of them were good. So if anyone has any names, I would very much appreciate someone to name this massive piece of garbage. <laughs> that, you know, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully you guys uh, like the video. Uh, that's going to be uh, the end for today. And uh, do look forward to tomorrow's video. We're going to be doing a fun, 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 fun thing. So I'd like to thank you for watching. Until next time, please write or comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.